one of the problems is that uh, because of folks like Bill Clinton, who had this theory that to promote peace, promote democracy, uh, the international community, starting at the beginning of the 1990s, had the idea that, as I was saying in my Burundi story, that the international um, organizations and uh, the advanced democratic states should try to compel developing countries that still had authoritarian regimes to become democracies quickly uh, and to hold elections soon after the end of a civil war or to hold elections uh, soon after the collapse of a dictatorship uh, regime. So uh, before 1990, the average time to the first election <laughs> after the end of a civil war was 5.6 years. Uh, since 1990, the time has shrunk to 2.7 years. And I think a lot of it has to do with international pressure, like those donors that told Burundi, you're going to have an election now, whether you want to uh, or not. Uh, the problem is that uh, some research that I've been doing along with my co-author, Don Brancati, who actually did you know, all the work. But uh, <laughs> what, what Don found uh, is that the sooner you hold an election after the end of a civil war, the more likely it is that you're going to cycle right back into the civil war. Uh, she found that this was true for just uh, calendar time, uh, but she found that it was particularly true for uh, cases where the country held an election before the rebel army was fully disarmed. That's not so surprising. Um, but it also held true if the election was held before the country improved its quality of bureaucratic administration and uh, was true if the country held an election before it improved its uh, score on uh, rule of law, quality of rule of law in uh, the country. So, um, you know, pretty strong evidence that early elections, holding elections quickly, before the country has built up the kinds of institutions that it needs in order to have elections safely, uh, is dangerous and leads back into war. There's a little bit of good news in uh, Dawn's findings, which is that although the international community can muck things up by demanding quick elections, they can also fix the problem if they provide robust peacekeeping in the country. Uh, and uh, they can also help fix the problem if they help the country build those institutions and also if they help the different contending groups to, uh, uh, to uh, have what's called a power sharing agreement associated with the election, where no matter who wins the election, all the groups contending the election will get some position in the cabinet and uh, the key posts in the government. So you get to have free elections, but the, the sting of losing the election is a lot less, because you're guaranteed to, to get something out of it, even if you lose. Uh, so. Uh, what, are the, what are the prescriptive implications from what I've been telling you? Um, one is don't press hard for early elections in countries that have some of these risk factors, like weak institutions or low per capita income or literacy 
or ethnic divisions in the country that are not yet resolved. Uh, second take home point is sequencing your transition to democracy, making sure that you work hard first on strengthening state institutions, in, including the quality of the bureaucracy the, and the media, um, before moving to out and out political contestation in winner take all elections. And uh, my final take home point is for, for those of you who, th who think that that sounds like, well, you know, we're not doing enough to help. Uh, my final take home point is that one of the best things that the international community and the advanced democracies can do is to try to create a broader international economic and security environment in which democratization can take place. Uh, one of the strongest social science findings about democratic transitions is that they're less likely to be violent and more likely to succeed in consolidating democracy if they take place in a favorable environment. One where there are other democratic countries that are neighbors. Think of the democratization in Spain, Greece, and Eastern Europe that benefited from being part of Europe, integrated into European Union institutions. But also, another thing that makes a big difference, according to social science research findings, is uh, the strength of the broader security community created by the democratic peace among the great powers, and also the strength of the open liberal trading system that gives an opportunity for newly democratizing countries to make their transition in an international environment that's more conducive to peace, uh, less, a, less of a bad neighborhood.